Hi class, this is Professor Brennan. I am back. Um, if you'll notice, I'm actually in a different space. I had to move because um, we're doing, my partner's doing some recording in another room. And so uh, I want to do this so we don't get interrupted with any noise. So here I am, small group communication. We are on part three of the lecture on diversity within the small group. We left off, we had just talked about cultural diversity within the group and understanding all those components. In addition to the obvious ones that we always talk about is race and ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, but in other, other ways to think about it, we talked about collectivism versus individualism, uh, low context versus high context. And now we're gonna get right into uh, tensions and roles within the small group. So let me just find, there we are. I'm going to take you straight to the PowerPoint. There we are, tensions and roles in the small group. And uh, we're going to talk about, so let's think about what I mean by that before I even get into it. So tensions and roles in this small group, you're going to have different roles. And the roles are going to change over time. And it doesn't mean each one of you takes a role and that's the end of it. Like it's not like daughter, son, you're always the daughter and son. It doesn't work that way in the small group. It can change. Someone might take a certain role and then it might change. The other person might take over that role or there might be more than one person in a particular role. Okay, so roles in the small group are changeable. They aren't fixed. Not like in a family where the mother who has children is always gonna be the mother. She's always gonna be the biological mother. Those, that role and then whether she plays that role is gonna be up to her, okay? Or the father whether he's a biological father, whether he plays the role of father, it's up to him. And more than pe more than one person can play that role, right? Of mother or father to a child. So keeping all that in mind. So we're gonna talk about tensions first. So tensions happen, are really based upon, when we talk about tensions, it's like, the, like a source of conflict or a source of discomfort. Can be a source of conflict, but a source of discomfort, a tension that you have within the small group between group members. Uh, that happens based upon the time you've been spent spending together. So the first tension we call is called the primary tension. And that is that anxiety last week when I put you into new groups, that anxiety you feel when you're put in a new group, right? When you're put with new people that you don't know, or even with your initial groups when you first were put together and had to talk to people you never met before, there's always a primary tension, right? Who are these people who am I talking to? Will they like me? Will they not like me? Will I like them? That set of primary attention you feel at initially meeting people, totally normal. Uh, group members can appear overly polite. So it means that you're on your best behavior, right? Have you ever like, you know, gone out on your first date? Everyone's always in their best behavior and they're, especially on their first date, if not in their first five dates or first three dates. Um, conversations seem to have long pauses. It means you're not sure what to say. So there might be some silence and then you start talking again. All right, that's normal. Secondary attention. Now y'all have uh, been working together, okay? Again, we'll talk about uh, the roles. One of the roles is the task role, but you all have been together a little bit. So that, that tension happens when you start to get into tasks and you start to have some little clashing between group members and it's over task. It's not over personalities. It's over like decisions, maybe general direction you wanna go in in terms of priorities or what you're gonna work on or could be on um, the routine of the group, how often you're gonna meet. It's that kind of thing. You're not clashing over personalities. You have a little tension over particular uh, maybe what you're gonna work on or how you're gonna work on it, okay? So in anger communicated through long, uncomfortable pauses. So the tension is there, the tension is felt in those pauses. All right, tertiary tension. This is likely to happen, may not happen in your small group, but it's likely to happen when you all have know each other a little bit, right? You kind of have a sense of, who is that group member? Who, how do they act? You know them. You've been with them for at least a month, 
right? You've been with them. You've been working with them for at least a month. You have a sense of who they are. And church retention is resulting from power and status issues related to the group. So what naturally happens in a small group is someone kind of rises to the occasion of leader or acts kind of like the leader of the group or people look to that person. We'll talk about leadership later on in the semester. But often, or the someone is like the person who's always the jokester or maybe the, the, pers- the quiet person who comes up, they're the most um, logical or reasonable of the group. Whatever it is, the group kind of maybe the person that they look to or maybe the person that dominates the group there can be tension resulting from the power or status associated with that role. And maybe someone's tired of listening to someone who's always calling the shots. So the tension results and you can see that if someone else has a strong personality and then you have another strong personality, there can be clashes. But that strong personality has to come out and usually that happens over time. It's not usually immediate. It happens over time, someone who dominates. I'm going to give you an example for my small group. So in grad school, I had to do some small group work. It wasn't necessarily a small group class. We worked in a small group. And I definitely saw myself. I knew I'm a teacher, right? So I'm naturally dominating. Most teachers are have dominating personalities. So I knew that about myself. But I didn't know that I was so unwilling I I was also impatient. That's what I discovered, that I was getting impatient with people that I thought they wanted to talk something over. Maybe I was really tax, task oriented too. They wanted to talk over a decision where I felt we had come to a good decision. I wanted to move on and get, get to it and get it over with. And they wanted to keep talking about it, which I felt like it was a waste of time. That's literally. And I got... I was, I got so irritated that I actually walked out of the group. I can remember we were meeting in an office and I walked out of the office and I needed to chill out. And I found myself and I was butting heads with a particular person in that group. And I think that I felt like I had, maybe I felt like the power and status in terms of like directing, put, having a lot of influence over the direction of the group. And she was butting heads with me, probably because she was sick of me trying to influence. Um, I don't know. We never really talked about it. We're friends now, but that's what happens. Like it can just happen. It doesn't mean you're going to lose friendship or lose respect. It just happens, right? It's no, it's natural. So examples are conflict over decisions being made. I just gave you that example and who has made them, right? Conflict over who's authority or leadership in the group. That's church retention, right? So it becomes personal. Church retention is related to personality. It is not, it can be, uh, can start as a task, but it becomes related to the personality, not necessarily to the thing itself, but it's about who you're dealing with. Okay, let me look at the time. We're doing good. All right. The type of tension is more likely to have direct expenses of anger, irritation, definitely more confrontational. So just know that that is normal. It's part of what happens in a group. Okay. Uh, let's look at roles in the small group. So we've got task and maintenance, and then we have individual role. Task and maintenance are the general roles of the group. The task role in the group, that's the person that focus on what needs to get done, keeps the group uh, on task, and helps them focus on the, the things that need to, uh, I just said that get done, but the things that need to happen, the goals of the group, um, what needs to be turned in, assignments. So their behavior, and it can be more than one person in the group, their behavior is exemplified by they, they're good at initiating and orientating. They're good at information giving. They're not afraid to give their opinions. They're really good at clarifying, like saying, look at this assignment. Let's clarify what exactly we need to do. They're good at elaborating and explaining. And it's part of summarizing, like saying to the group, okay, so this week we're going to do this. Okay, so it's that's the kind of behaviors that are task oriented. Now, someone who's maintenance oriented, there are, there are the harmonizers of the group. Also super important. You need people to maintain the group relationships. 
they do this by establishing the norms, by talking about you know, how we're going to talk with each other, how we respect each other, being on time, whatever group norm, norms that you all come up with. Uh, they support other people, right? They'll give applause when someone does something good. They try to create harmony in the group. Uh, let's say there's maybe there's some tension going on. Maybe they're the mediator, right? They try to like get everyone to get along. They're tension relieving. They could be dramatizing. So maybe they're like their personality they are really good at expressing themselves so people feel like they're more personal or they're more social than the person who's just focused on task. Um, and they're able to show solidarity. They're able to show like, we're in this together, we can do this. They're like the cheerleader. So you can be both of those, but oftentimes because of people's personalities, they end up ta taking one or the other. One can be more task oriented and one more might be more maintenance oriented. All right, we're gonna go into individual role and then we're gonna finish up and we'll go to part four in a minute. So individual role of the group. I just want you to think about that for a minute. Do you think individual role is gonna be a good role to have in the group? Since we're doing small group communication, think about it. Individual role is generally not helpful task and maintenance are, are their energy is focused toward the group, whether it's getting something done or they're maintaining relationships. The individual role is a more self-centered role. Now it might have some positive things about it, but over time it does not help things. Now I've given you a couple examples. It can be the person who's the jokester, it can be the person who's always dominating and has to dominate the conversation. It can be the complainer, okay? The person who's like, oh my God, my life is terrible. Or it can be the person who's always in chaos, the drama queen. So group members behave in ways that are self-centered. So group members behave in ways that are focused on self, bring all the attention to themselves, which then ends up distracting the group from their goals by focusing the attention on themselves, right? So it's the person that comes to a group late and says, oh my God, my car just blew up or I just ran out of gas or their life is always in chaos because they're completely centered, focused on self. It happens, right? We'll talk about how to deal, deal with that. But you really, if you're that person, you really wanna look at that and how that's not helping. You really, this is a time for you to take a collectivist attitude toward your small group. And so this can be characterized, how do we know it? By what we call withdrawing. When we say blocking, it just means keeping people from getting things done by trying to get the attention on you. It can be uh, playing, acting helpless, status seeking, right? looking for, trying to get all the attention on themselves, recognition seeking. So you got the idea how that all detracts from the group and getting the group, getting, keeping the group harmonized and also getting the group on task to get your assignment done or to get your project done. So we are going to move into next, we're going to talk about learning styles. That's going to be part four and we'll move into that in a minute and I'll be back and I'll see you soon.